A stroke can strike at almost any age with no advance warning. So no wonder some are calling a new experimental treatment for its victims a stroke of genius. Susan Spencer tells us all about it. Retired New Jersey school teacher Holly Euland and her son Aaron always have been exceptionally close. What sort of personality does he have? Very compassionate, loves animals, has always been a tinkerer. Young and capable, Aaron seemed perfectly healthy until one January morning in 2019. I woke up to use the bathroom and I couldn't get out of my bed. I had to grab something to get out of my bed. And then I got my two feet on the floor and I walked just a couple of feet and I fell down. I went to go down the hallway past his bedroom, found him in the floor, but he could not get up. You couldn't get up off the floor? No. This must have been terrifying. Yeah. At just 39 years old, Aaron had suffered a stroke, paralyzing his left side. He tried to talk to me, but his words were all gargled, and I was terrified that he'd never speak again. After four days in the ICU, he'd regained his speech, but not much else. Stand up again. He then spent two months in rehab. We had one neurologist tell us that Aaron would never move his arm again. And when we got in the parking lot, I literally put his face in my hands and I said, don't you even buy into that. How would you define a stroke? A stroke occurs whenever there is any problem with blood flow to the brain. The more common type is caused by some sort of blockage of an artery. Dr. Diana Zhang is a neurology professor at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. In general, people assume that strokes happen only to older people. Is that the case? Anyone can have a stroke, even young people and there is a concerning trend where there are more young adults suffering from strokes. Astoundingly, one American has a stroke every 40 seconds, and 10 to 15 percent of stroke victims are only 18 to 49 years old. <laughs> As to why this happens, about 50 percent of the time when a young person has a stroke, we can't figure out the cause. The cause of Aaron's stroke is still a mystery, but the consequences are devastatingly clear. There is no regeneration of brain cells. Once you've had a stroke, the brain cells that have been affected are, are dead. For some patients, we offer intensive physical therapy, um, occupational therapy, speech therapy. But in terms of direct interventions that we can provide to patients, still none to, uh, to help them regain what they've lost. But Aaron is determined to regain what's lost, which is why he mastered a three-wheeler when he couldn't ride a regular bike. And it's why he said yes to be patient one in a revolutionary study at Thomas Jefferson University. His mother wasn't so sure. So they're telling you we're going to put electrodes in your son's brain. And your reaction to this was? Honestly, I was terrified, but I also knew it was Aaron's decision. And he did not hesitate? No. He just kept saying, I want my arm back. So last October, with cameras rolling, doctors implanted multiple electrodes in Aaron's brain. It took nine hours. We rehearsed this hundreds of times prior to surgery, to know how we were going to do it, to know it precisely where we were going to put it. Jefferson Health neurosurgeon Dr. Robert Rosenwasser is one of two lead doctors on the study. And the bright white spots are where there's the stroke. Thomas Jefferson University neurology professor Dr. Mikhail Saruya is the other. What are these electrodes like? How big are they? What do they look like? The electrodes for this study are incredibly small. They're about the size of a baby aspirin or a regular M&M, so smaller than a peanut M&M, and they just go into the surface of the cortex, the outside of the brain. Th what this is is basically an electrode array and then it's a little bundle of wires that comes out. And you can see actually one, two, three, four. And in a nutshell, the role of these electrodes is? The role of the electrodes 
is to record the electrical signals from his existing brain cells, take those electrical signals, and convert them into the movement that he desires to do. Move his fingers, move his hand, move his arm. In other words, Aaron's stroke damaged the connection between his brain and his arm. Each one of those is going to connect to a different electrode. These electrodes repair it, sending signals from his brain to a motorized brace. And voila, Aaron can move his arm again. Very good. That was very good. Yeah, do that a couple times. He's shown us that someone almost two years now after a pretty significant stroke can recover function. And it's right. just the beginning. There's so many things that we do that we just completely take for granted. For example, pick up a cup or he said he has trouble zipping anything because he can't you know, use that hand. How far do you think this technology can go in terms of people actually regaining fine motor skills? Well, I'm not sure I'll be on this earth to see it, <laughs> but I think we'll have people playing the piano and being concert violinists. Come on, seriously? Seriously. That's amazing. It is amazing. Aaron's electrodes were put in for only a three month trial. But doctors see the day when, like a pacemaker, this technology will be wireless and implantable, eliminating the arm brace altogether. I think that is the goal, that in the coming 5, 10, 15, 20 years, we will have a medical device that will be available for people who've had a stroke so that they can go to their physician, their neurosurgery team, get this device, and however far they've gotten in their physical and occupational therapy, they can break through that plateau and keep going and restore movement. Your doctors think that this is potentially a game changer. Yeah, it'll help other stroke victims and they can look at my stuff. Exactly. They call me the pioneer. You like that? Yeah. <laughs>